Yeah, I'm a marshmallow. Go sit in a corner and think about what you did. Hello and welcome. So I'm just gonna stop myself right there because this audio is not great. So I'm gonna bring you up to speed. I'm Lindsay Crane and these are my retro craft dreams. Today I am gonna show you some footage that I filmed uh, that didn't turn out quite as well as I'd hoped. This video has been plagued with technical difficulties and I'm just gonna do what I can. We're gonna talk about how I had the brilliant idea to make a coat while getting ready to move across the country, having never made a garment before in my life. Zero out of 10 do not recommend for your first project. Moving from Seattle to Michigan, I found myself lacking a winter coat. I didn't really have the ability to shop around in Seattle, nor did I have very much confidence in being able to find one at all anyway. Seattle just really doesn't do winter coats. It's just not our thing. So I wanted to wait till I got to Michigan to go coat shopping, but I still needed something in the meantime for when I got there. I found in my donations pile an old quilted blanket and decided to just make one. I went shopping online for the perfect pattern. I looked at a lot of vintage styles. One of the things that I was looking for specifically in making this coat was something that was not fitted, so I wouldn't have to worry about doing any darts or tailoring or anything like that. This is, again, my first garment, and I'm sewing on a time crunch. So what I needed was a nice big boxy 80s style coat, and that is what I found. So the pattern I found online was Simplicity 8311. It has dolman sleeves, so I don't have to worry about learning to do sleeve setting. I have chosen not to do inseam pockets because that's another thing that I would have to take a moment to learn how to do. I'm also not doing buttons because I don't want to have to worry about learning how to do buttonholes. So there's a lot of shortcuts that I'm taking. Additionally, because I'm using a quilted blanket, I don't have to do any linings or facings or interfacings. It does mean paying a lot more attention to finishing seams, and I also had to finish off the edges of the fabric itself. But there is a bonus on this blanket is that it has a bound edge, and I was able to rip off that binding and put it back on again where I wanted it. So some of this I am going to have to still play the original footage with lousy audio. I'm very sorry for that. But in the spirit of showing my thought process and my reactions, um, I felt like those are the things you're going to want to see. Hopefully it's not too bad. So here's a bonus. If I decide to go the belt route, this blanket also has two of these pillow shams that have these little tie closures. So I've got belt loops already made. Then there's plain coordinating fabric on the back. So if I need like for pocket lining or anything like that, it's all right here. This is kind of a one and done thing. So if the camera angles don't work, I won't know it until it's too late. And I do apologize for that. Now I did read through these instructions a little bit when I got it, but that was like a couple weeks ago. So I need A and B. This coat did just seem so huge. Like, it's just so huge. I did need to inspect the blanket. It had been in storage for a really long time. It has some large white faded spots that I definitely want to avoid. I found a lot of holes that were on the pink side. They didn't go all the way through, but they did pretty much dictate that the pink did have to be on the inside. I wanted to maintain all of the pattern grading on the pattern pieces, so I trimmed to the furthest outline, no matter what size it was. So then I would just fold back the paper to whatever line was appropriate. It turned out that the big spot was going to end up right in the middle of one of the front panels. So I tried several different ways of turning it on the fabric. Unfortunately, the only way to make it work and avoid that spot was to do away with an idea I had of maintaining the bottom hem that was already on the blanket. Not a huge deal, but you know, it would have been neat to have been able to use that. All right, final checks. Is there anything else I should think of? Don't tell me because you're gonna be too late. Is there anything else I should think of before cutting? You just gotta plow into it sometimes, yeah? Okay, this coat's gonna be pretty huge. Okay, so that is 
cutting done. This looks massive. Okay, I think like this goes like that. <laughs> I don't know, it might be, it might actually turn out cute. I'm, I've, I haven't been convinced, but like, it's not exactly an 80s fabric. Like I haven't been convinced of the marriage of fabric to pattern. It's just what I had, but I don't know, maybe. I just want to pin it together roughly. Now is the back arm like half an inch bigger because I did something wrong? Wow, this looks humongous though. Maybe I didn't need a large. Oh, this might give me some trouble. I don't know how that's going to go. How does that get sewn together? Yeah, I bet that and that are supposed to match up. How did that not happen? How big are we? Whoo! Wow. Oh my God. Hang on a second. Let me bring you back here. <laughs> way, way big. The side seams almost seem correct from the back panel. This can't be right. Are the sleeves just throwing me off? Like this, these, these cuffs. Oh, actually look much better this colorway though. It's a blanket. That's, that's for sure. I have to definitely uh, grade this down a little. Yeah. I'm a marshmallow. So I'm going to have my dinner and contemplate how much to and small in this. Go sit in a corner and think about what you did. Day two, gonna try this thing on again. Um, you know, it's supposed to be big, but like, I can't even find my armpit. <laughs> um, I picked the right size, pretty sure of that. So I don't know if it's really supposed to be this oversized or maybe the, the pattern grading is just really ridiculous. I did realize one mistake that I made um, in the back panel, the pattern called for two pieces um, with a seam down the back, you know, because fabric width. I didn't have to do that because I was using a blanket, but I forgot to take out the seam allowance from what would have been a middle seam. So it is, what, an inch or so bigger across the back, which explains why um, when I was trying to like match up the shoulder seam, I had a lot of extra fabric and I was really confused. Well, that's why, because there is an inch of extra fabric. So I'm going to try to adjust the back panel. I could, you know, just do the easy thing and make the seam up the back, but I needed to correct the back panel, but my mistake essentially made the curve in the collar wider than it was supposed to be. So after realigning the back pattern piece with the seam allowance removed, I decided to slide the whole pattern piece down on the fabric a little bit so that I could gain a little more fabric in that collar area. This did mean losing some width from the bottom of the sleeve. However, the sleeves were way too big anyway, so I was okay with that. I redrew the front pieces to the medium size and then pinned the back straight through, effectively making it also the medium size in theory. It still feels like a marshmallow. Do I still look like a marshmallow? The sleeves are still quite big. It feels like I'm swimming in it and yet there's still parts where like it doesn't have the freedom of movement that I would expect from something that I am swimming in. But I think we're getting there. We're definitely closer. The sleeves feel normal. I kind of ended up just Frankensteining this pattern by using different lines from different sizes. I didn't expect to have to do pattern adjusting on a big boxy coat. So I was just kind of manipulating it so that the back panel will be at the large size and the front panels are at the medium size. Is this any different? Of course, this is meant to be worn with shoulder pads, which I am not doing. Like, I'm just, I'm gonna be a mushroom. I mean, I guess I feel 80s. I keep thinking of Catherine O'Hara in Home Alone. She's got her big camel coat with like color that goes all the way like that. 
it's I think it's just this I think I'm gonna have no choice but to just sew it together like I don't know that I've got the skill to do anything more with this it's an 80s coat like what can I say the seam allowances were all over the place and I didn't feel like cutting it anymore just in case I still had it wrong. So I basted a rough stitch line that I could then draw on top of with a little more precision. I'm in the camp of preferring to sew on a stitch line as opposed to using seam allowances anyway, so that worked just fine for me. So just a really quick update. I have basted the lower seams, the lower side seams and have been trying to like figure out what to do with the neck because that's where it's the most screwed up from when I forgot to take out the seam allowance. And so I tried it on again and I came to the conclusion that actually the top seams down the tops of the arms could stand to be much lower and like cinch the whole coat up a little bit, which will do two things. It will make the underarm curve feel a little more natural and it will hopefully lower the neckline if I just adjust to the small or even the petite size line on here um, because then I can just follow that line and then follow the collar line. I'm not really worried about being exact. Um, I'm just worried about it not looking completely idiotically humongous so I'm just gonna rough it out and go for it and um, try and get that stitching line basted in. I'm sleepy so I'm making some coffee I'm gonna get this basted up hopefully tomorrow I can sew it for real because I have other things I gotta get done tonight uh, moving related I stitched the join in the back of the collar, but realized I had to finish that seam before moving on. Just when I thought I was gonna get going, that was like two minutes worth of sewing. Well, that was a satisfying one. I decided to cover exterior seams with open sections of binding I removed from the edges of the blanket scraps. To make the seam lay flat, I first trimmed out some of the batting, then pressed the seam open and pressed the binding. I then top stitched it down both edges. That went really crooked on that seam. My stitches are really straight. They're just not parallel to the seam. <laughs> oh well. Then I moved on to the side seams. They didn't take long and it was time to address the collar attachment. It is what it is. Okay, so I just have to do it, honestly. For all my finagling, I still couldn't figure out how to match up the collar seam. So I basically held the pieces how they should lay and just fudged it together while trying to follow the line on the front side. As I stitched, I had to shift the collar layer around a pivot point. And I'm not sure if that's really what I was supposed to do, but it worked fine on the side where the shawl was on top. However, the instructions did say to start in the center back and stitch outward which meant one side had to be stitched with the shawl underneath, and that's where I hit my biggest glitch. Oh. How am I gonna sew that from the other side when all the weird stuff I have to manipulate is gonna be on the bottom then? It's gonna be a pain in the butt. But we're gonna run with it. I took a moment to draw my stitching line on the back, doing my best to mirror the stitches from the other side, especially since I somehow stitched a curve that went the opposite way from what I thought I was doing. I don't need this coat to be perfect, but I do want it to be symmetrical. I mean, we gotta end up here, so like, I have to match it, don't I? I mean, I'll probably end up having to pick this and redo it. We're winging it. I tried to make it work by manipulating the shawl collar around the pivot point as before, but being underneath, I couldn't get it to go where I wanted it to, and I had to pull the needle up to move it over. This of course turned out about as well as you would expect. Oh, that's like way off. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Oh, look at the damage. Because <laughs> I had to pull the needle out. Oh, man. Oh, that's so bad. Fix it in post. This is 
the collar like actually work pretty well. One that I had to do upside down and got this little triangly, no, rectangle. I got like an extra rectangle in there. I think I'm just gonna, you know, try and pick that and then sew over the whole thing on the correct side and see if that can fix it. I've manipulated it enough to see that um, when I tried to like match that curve, <laughs> I went way up. So I think all I really need to do is go back over this line, but continue here and then turn the corner there and um, should fix itself. All this extra fabric can then just float free and be whatever it's supposed to be. Okay. Now, you know, this may still not work. I don't know what else I can do. Still not perfect. That extra bit of fabric, I, you know, don't know where it's coming from. You know, it's still there, but um, it's definitely improvement. I don't think anybody's going to notice but me. So I'm going to go ahead and <laughs> do something with these seam allowances. Um, trim them, press them. I'm pretty sure at this point, like, I'm not going to redo anything except maybe the collar again. So I might leave a little extra seam allowance there. So I've got some room to, like, fuss around with it. I am already regretting not having side pockets. Um, of course, I didn't have time for that, so I definitely got to make sure I figure out some patch pockets because I'm going to need pockets. Um, so yeah, we'll see. But first things first, I'll go ahead and take care of these seam allowances. So last night I picked all the binding off of the rest of the blanket scraps. And then what I think I'm gonna do, since they're not long enough to go all the way around without a seam, I think I'm gonna stop here and then have a short piece bridge this. Otherwise it's just gonna be way too thick. And then I'll probably wanna do them around the top of the cuffs. And then I'm still undecided about the actual hem. I still have this bit here if I wanna do binding on the other two panels, like I'll have to pick it back and put on the binding and then reseam that. But um, I don't know what will be easier, trying to put a hem in this super thick fabric or just doing binding. And then lastly, there's the cuffs themselves. I've got these shorter pieces and I'm just going to cover it just like I did on the collar. The main thing is that I won't be able to get this in a sewing machine, so I'm going to have to do this by hand. And of course, there are two seams on each sleeve, so that's going to bite. Oh, did I just win bobbin chicken? I think I just won bobbin chicken. <laughs> like seriously, just won bobbin chicken. I first measured back six inches from the edge of the cuffs. 
I snipped open the stitches holding the quilted layers together so I could trim out as much of the batting from the seam allowance as possible. I then cut back the fabric layers so they would sit inside the flattened binding, but after the first one I realized I did want as much of the top layer as could fit so it could help the other layers lay flatter. Then I turned back the upper end of the binding and lined it up at the 6 inch mark, which was the end of where I had trimmed, and pinned it in place, smoothing the seam allowance as I went. Then I did a back stitch by hand that only went through the top layer of the quilt, with the exception of the folded end, which was just too many layers. This means that there are stitches visible on the outside, but you'll really never see them, especially with all the quilted stitches that are already there. I absolutely needed a pocket for traveling, but I didn't have time to deal with the pattern again So I just cut a rectangle that was large enough to hold even the caboodles that I like to keep my projects in I Stitched binding across the top edge and pinked the others as well as the corners To determine vertical placement I put the coat on and just put it where it felt natural and then I aligned one edge with the side seam I tried to stitch it by machine, but it was just too much bulk, so I had to stitch it by hand at my friend's house where I stayed after the movers came. Unfortunately, I only had one hand and no tripod and could not film this part. Before I show you the final result, there are a couple things I want to make note of. Firstly, I... I packed away my pinking shears before trimming the corners on the second pocket. I also forgot to pack my thread for the airplane. Um, even the pocket that I sewed on at my friend's house, I had to borrow thread from her and used like all the trimmings and ends from my seams. So the second pocket is not yet attached, but a second pocket is coming. Secondly, I did decide to do snaps for the closure, but I did not have any in an appropriate size. Um, I did finally buy some just the other day, but they are not attached yet. I'm also planning on digging through my button stash to see if I can find some cool vintage buttons to put on top as faux buttons, but I have to find my buttons. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed watching me go through this process. Hopefully future sewing projects won't be quite so haphazard, um, but you know, first time and you know got my fair and square mess up it gave me a lot of good practice sewing binding i don't think i'd ever actually done it before if i ever make this again i absolutely am going to find the right camel color fabric and i'm totally making myself a kate McAllister coat totally if you enjoyed this video, I do hope you'll give it a like um, so that I know that you liked it. And feel free to leave your comments down below. Tell me what I could do better next time. I know I have a lot to learn. It kind of felt fair to go through this process without looking to the internet for help. Because whoever originally made this pattern in 1987, they didn't have the internet to look up for help. They just had whatever knowledge they had gleaned from wherever else in their life. So it kind of felt fair to me to just wing it all the way through, but that doesn't mean I can't learn for the next time. So do feel free to let me know down below what else I could have done differently. I'm so glad you were here to share my very first garment sewing adventure with me. I do hope to make more garments in the future. I don't know what I'll make next. I don't know how long it will be. The next clothing item I make is actually going to be a crocheted sweater or vest or something, I believe. So, you know, if you like vintage crafts from the 70s and 80s, stick around because that's what I do. I do crafts of all kinds, usually from a vintage kit or a vintage book and sometimes with only vintage knowledge. And I just like to have fun and make things here and I hope you'll stick around for that. Happy crafting and I'll see you next time.
no, you can't walk away with it. <laughs> it's attached. No. You can't walk away with that. Where are you going?